Welcome to this YSL tutorial in Microsoft Power BI. In this first part of the series, we'll explain how to install and run the Power BI desktop application for the first time. We'll begin by showing you how to download and install the standalone version from the Microsoft website, along with a brief discussion of whether to choose the 32-bit or 64-bit edition. We'll then explain how you can install the Power BI desktop app from the Microsoft Store and talk about a couple of the small advantages of doing things that way. We'll then show you how to run the software for the first time, including how to sign into the Power BI service using a free Power BI account. For the last part of the video, we'll talk briefly about the other types of Power BI accounts you can choose, depending on how much money you've got to spend. So let's get started. There are two main techniques you can use to install Power BI Desktop on your computer. One method involves downloading and running an installer file. The other method involves downloading an app from the Microsoft Store. If you want to download a separate installer file, you can perform a quick Google search for Power BI Desktop and find the link to download Power BI Desktop from official Microsoft, etc, etc. When you follow that link, you'll end up on this page, which allows you a quick click of a download button to choose which version of Power BI Desktop you like. There are two different versions of Power BI Desktop. There's a 32-bit edition, which is the first one listed here, and a 64-bit edition. In most cases, for performance reasons, you'll be picking the 64-bit edition. The main reason you might choose the 32-bit edition is if you're getting your data primarily from a 32-bit version of Microsoft Office with access databases and old Excel files, so legacy Excel files with the XLS file type. There's a little article that Microsoft have written about why you might choose the 32-bit edition of Power BI, so you can have a quick click on this link and uh, have a quick read of this page just in case you're not sure which version you're going to need. In most cases in this series, we're not going to be using Access or Legacy Excel files, so I'd choose to install the 64-bit edition by checking this box, then clicking Next, and then eventually I'll get to the point where my file starts to download. Once the download is finished, you can choose to run the file that's been downloaded. The exact way you'll do that will depend on which browser you're using to download the file. I'm using Chrome, so I can click on the little up arrow here and then click Open to run the file. Eventually, this will start a little installer wizard, which you can see appearing here now on my screen. So at this point, I can choose to read some extra help with these little links, or I can just click Next to move to the next stage, quickly read the terms and conditions, which I've done many times, of course, in the past, and then I can tick the box to choose to accept those conditions. I can then click Next, choose a location to install the software, click Next again, choose whether I want a desktop shortcut, I'll uncheck that box. And then to begin the installation process, I can click the install button. Now I will need to provide admin privileges to allow that to happen. So that's one small downside of installing the standalone version of Power BI Desktop. I don't actually want to install the, the standalone version in this particular video. Uh, currently, Microsoft don't support a side-by-side -side installation of the standalone version and the Microsoft Store version of Power BI Desktop. So here what I'm going to do is cancel this so that I don't have to then just uninstall it, having shown you how to install it. I can click yes to abandon the process and then finally click finish. To install the Power BI Desktop app from the Microsoft Store, we'll first of all, of course, need to open up the store. So let's perform a quick search for store and choose to open up Microsoft Store. And then when that finally does open, we can perform a quick search for Power BI Desktop. So we can use the search box at the top right hand corner and choose Power BI Desktop. There we go, we've got a quick link to the Power BI Desktop app and I can click on that link to visit that page. Now, because I've previously installed Power BI Desktop from the store, I'm told that I already own this app. I didn't pay for it, it's free of course, you don't have to pay any money for Power BI Desktop. Uh, but if you haven't previously downloaded it as an app from the store, you'll first of all need to click a button called Get to uh, obtain it, and then you can subsequently click the Install button to install the software. This time when I install, there's no choice of 32-bit or 64-bit edition, it's just the 64-bit edition. So one small disadvantage of using the app uh, from the store is that you don't get to choose the 32-bit edition. So again, if you need to use lots of 32-bit versions of Microsoft Access or old Excel files, you'd be better off using the standalone 32-bit edition.
Uh, you can choose to uh, connect your Microsoft account to, a, to the Microsoft Store, but I'm just going to ignore that for the time being. I can click the close button there, and then that will trigger the download and installation of the software. Uh, one advantage of downloading from the store is that it will automatically install updates whenever they're ready, so you don't have to check manually for updates. With the standalone installer version, what we'll have to do is when an update is released, and that happens on a monthly basis currently, you'll have to download the new version of the software and then install it again. So the, the file sizes, the downloads from the app uh, version and the software are much smaller. It only installs what's changed rather than a completely new installation of the entire software package using the standalone edition. At this point, I'm not going to make you wait until the, uh, the software is installed. Let's just take a quick pause and then we'll come back when that's finished. Okay, so the software is finally finished installing and I'm provided with a handy little launch button which I can click on to run the software. Of course, in future, you might want to run it from your start menu so you can search in the start menu for Power BI Desktop or just perform a quick little search for Power BI Desktop in the search box as well. I'm going to launch Power BI Desktop from this little link that's provided to me and it might take a little time to run the first time you run it. Uh, so just be a little patient the first time but it will tell you that it's loading with a little initializing model message. And then eventually it will pop up and immediately ask you to sign up for a Power BI account if you don't already have one. And I already have one already, so um, I'm not going to enter all my details again. It's certainly worthwhile signing up for this uh, to begin with. Uh, you need to have a either a work or a school email account. So it won't work with things like Hotmail or Gmail or, or um, uh, email accounts provided by your your uh, broadband providers, etc. So as long as you've got a work or school account, you can sign up for a free Power BI account. Um, it, the prompting to sign in is relentless, by the way. You can't really get around this, uh, or you can, but it's a little bit tedious to get around. So if you don't provide any details here, um, you can click you, that you already have an account, which will ask you to sign in with your current details. I can then choose to ignore that by clicking the cross to close down that dialog box. Then the next dialog box that appears also asks me to sign in. Eventually I can close that one down to actually get into the software. Now at some point I probably will want to sign into the Power BI service, if for nothing else to avoid seeing those relentless prompts to sign in every time I open the software. But also if I want to publish a finished report to the Power BI service, I'll need to be signed in. So of course I can head to the file menu and choose the sign in option here, or I can click the sign in link in the top right hand corner of the software as well. So let's click that now and go through the sign in process. The first thing I'll need to do is enter my email address and then followed by a password and then I'll be signed in. Okay, so I've signed in now and I can see that I've done that with my little uh, name sitting in the top right hand corner. And the next time I open the software, I won't be prompted with all those uh, the messages to sign in. It will remember my details. I'm currently signed in with a free account, which lets me build a report in exactly the same way as with a paid for account. So there's no restriction on what I can do in the desktop application. There are some restrictions on what I can do in terms of sharing after the report is published, but we'll get into the details of that a bit later on in the series. Just out of interest, if you did want to see what other options are available, there is a pricing uh, page about Power BI. So if you wanted to pay for the pro account, that's £7.50 per month, or uh, if you prefer dollars, there's a dollar price as well. Um, we do have a pro account, which we'll use to demonstrate various features later on in the series. If you're feeling particularly flush or you've got a bit of cash to burn, then uh, feel free to go with a Power BI premium account. Obviously, this is a, uh, a sort of an enterprise level uh, package, so you, uh, you won't be paying for that yourself, hopefully. If you're interested, you can get a free trial edition of the Pro, uh, Pro account, so I can see that I can get a 60-day free trial of Power BI Pro, um, which you can get from this page as well. As I say, we'll talk more about those differences after we've actually built some reports and published them. But for now, that's it for this video. So you know how to install the software, how to launch it, how to sign into an account, and basically you're ready to get started building reports.